On today's video, we're going to be looking at the top 10 most dangerous city in Mexico for 2023. We're going to run a small disclaimer in Spanish real quick. 10 ciudades más peligrosa de México. Este video es para turistas y personas viajando y no se habla directamente de nada que está pasando en México, sino solamente sugerencias para personas que están viajando. Many of the problems that the country of Mexico is facing are directly related to its commercial and trade partnerships with the United States, both licit and illicit. And with a few exceptions, the vast majority of these cities that we're going to look at are directly related to the United States in the source of their crime and violence. While all of these cities have high murder rates, we are not gauging the cities by murder rate alone, but by the perceived danger to anybody traveling through these places. Many of these towns are directly on the U.S.-Mexico border, and the ones that are further inland, a lot of the violence taking place is associated with the business associations going into the United States. Mexico has more homicide capitals than any other country in the world, but do not believe that cities in the United States are far behind. Cities like Birmingham, Jackson, Mississippi, Detroit, St. Louis are not far behind from some of the most dangerous cities in the world. However, crime in the United States is mostly oriented around violent crime and murders. In the country of Mexico, victimizing people that are passing through the country like tourists or migrants is another huge column of crime. Many times these crimes cannot be tracked accurately because of the nature of them. Which means that despite having similar murder rates to American cities, traveling through these cities in Mexico poses a far larger danger, especially to tourists and traveling migrants heading into Canada or the United States via Mexico. And it's important for you, the viewer, to understand that a vast majority of the problems that the country of Mexico is facing is directly related to its trade associations towards the United States. In other words, if we didn't have a problem here in the United States, they wouldn't have a problem there. And while we're going to be crossing the border today and looking at the cities down there and what they're facing, it's important for you to take away that border in your brain and put the crime statistics of the United States and Mexico side by side and see that really this is a problem that stretches both sides of that border with cities like St. Louis and Detroit ranking on par with their counterparts in Mexico. Number one is Reynosa, Tamaulipas. Despite not having a murder rate as high as Ciudad Juarez or Tijuana, going into this border town is very dangerous. Once you enter Tamaulipas, you're going to have to be extraordinarily careful. It is one of the most dangerous places to cross in Mexico. I can't really think of anyone who I've met who's gone through this state and hasn't told me a story about getting kid or getting carjacked. I have many friends who are from this border town and they tell me you cannot let the sun set on you while you are in this town. You need to cross back to the U.S. side as soon as it gets dark. While going into Mexico is a great experience, you have to be aware that some of these border towns can be extraordinarily dangerous. Many people report that law enforcement in this particular part of Mexico can be complicit and going to them for help will amount to absolutely nothing. While you will see a lot of newer model vehicles in this part of Mexico, you should avoid driving them. Keeping a low profile here will do you good, avoiding the outskirts of the city which are pretty much shanty towns and even neighborhoods right within the city core can be very dangerous. Number two is Uruapan, Michoacan. Not sure why you would find yourself in this part of Mexico, but if you do, you probably won't be there too long. The military presence here is very strong and you might feel like you're in the middle of a war zone more than an actual city. Don't let the new cars and banks and other monetary assets that you'll see in this part of Mexico fool you. It is downright dangerous just going to the grocery store here. 
Michoacan is a beautiful state with good food and amazing people, but going into these cities in this state requires extra caution as your safety is always in question and the government has to patrol the streets as if it were literally a war zone. Numero tres, Culiacán, Sinaloa. Known for their incredible music, their fashion, their love of horses. Going to the Starbucks here, however, requires extra measures of security. Whether you're just picking up a double smoked bacon or going to a trampoline park or buying a $50,000 ATV, don't let the money in this city fool you. While some people live in opulence, a lot of the people here live in absolute slums. And this wealth that's concentrated in the city lies in stark contrast to the poverty that many people here live. One of the most beautiful cities in Mexico with incredible food, music, and just incredible vibes. Unfortunately, this beautiful city is a dangerous place to visit. Many of the richer neighborhoods here look like something out of California. However, you need to be very careful because even in beautiful areas like this, you'll notice that people have cameras and barbed wire fences on their roof lines. Number four, Caborca, Sonora. This beautiful desert town is a desirable place, but not only for people who enjoy the outdoors and going out there and enjoying the desert, but also for criminals. Its geographic location makes it very desirable. And as you can see here, the military personnel are going to hide in crowded areas with their back against structures because they're scared for their lives. Armored vehicles, don't think because it's a beautiful city with beautiful homes that your safety here is not in peril. Many times the law enforcement is constantly out there trying to keep people safe, but just going for a walk here could mean you're going to have to deal with some very heavy security measures. And just like Cotton Hill lost his shins in WW2, the police officers that patrol these streets encounter all types of security threats. Unfortunately in Mexico, it's many times these beautiful cities with a lot of wealth that attract the most crime and violence. We're asking people how they travel to Mexico and would you travel to Mexico? Would you travel to Mexico, Crystal? We're doing a YouTube video about traveling to Mexico. Would you travel to Mexico? Do you feel safe? Dang town markers. They call you, but then when you try to talk to them, they don't want to talk. I really hope this trend of pretty places turning violent doesn't happen here in the United States because I like my palm trees, beaches, and stuff like that. Number 5, Ciudad Victoria in Tamaulipas. Back to Tamaulipas, right outside of Texas. This beautiful and gorgeous landscape. You'd think Cadillacs and cows could get along here, but they can't. One of the most dangerous places you could go to in Mexico. Despite being a beautiful colonial city with beautiful architecture and amazing mountain backdrops, there is still some serious poverty here. Now, there is also a lot of wealth. So that Victoria is close enough to the U.S.-Mexico border where a lot of people are able to profit greatly from its geographical location. While most people have great taste in vehicles, this guy sure doesn't. It's a beautiful historic city and again, a huge shame that just a beautiful location cannot be safely traveled by tourists. It's gorgeous. Mountains, beautiful historic neighborhoods, and again, being close to the U.S.-Mexico border, there is money here as well. Many times in Mexico, you can see a correlation between rich, nice areas and a lot of crime. Many people feel that the government doesn't give them enough opportunity and they have no other reason to resort to crime. Number six, Tijuana, Baja California. Hard to believe that across the border from San Diego, one of the most beautiful cities in the United States, lies absolute poverty and misery. While many people in the United States are familiar with this city, they travel back and forth, increasingly it's become dangerous, and then it now has one of the most insane murder rates of anywhere in the entire world, even though it has a huge population. Not only does Tijuana have a huge murder rate, but it also has a huge population, which means every year thousands of people are lost on these streets. That means several people every single day. Very sad statistics. This city is special to a lot of Americans who used to enjoy traveling here with many cultural things like lowriders and great music. 
Unfortunately, it's become dangerous for people to even have large events in the city, and the crime is definitely at a level where most Americans just don't feel safe traveling here anymore. Number seven, Ciudad Juarez, Estado de Chihuahua. El Paso, Texas is one of the safest cities in the United States. But when you cross over into Juarez, it's a different world. The most safe city in the United States is right across from the most dangerous city in the world. If you were to consider this whole area as one metropolitan area, the vast majority of the people would be on the Mexican side. Taking this border crossing will take you from one of the safest cities in the United States to one of the most dangerous cities in the world. Poverty exists here despite the fact it's right on the U.S. border. Many of the hillsides that overlook the United States are nothing more than shanty towns. But while poverty is a problem, safety is a complete concern. One city spanning two different countries with completely different situations. Number 8. Apatzingán, Michoacán one of the most terrifying cities in Mexico, it has always had a very high crime rate. The city has a fascination with American cars, pickup trucks, and box Chevys. Perhaps is the desire to get that Chevy truck just right or those parts you need for that box Chevy that drives people to get involved in crime here. And getting that mamalona just right might just mean that you could be the next victim. The city is rampant with poverty and opportunities here are very slim unless you, a tourist, shows up. Number 9. Acapulco Guerrero. I think Acapulco is Spanish for octopus. I'm not sure. This was once a world-renowned travel destination. I remember living in Cuba as a little kid. When you said Acapulco, it meant beaches, parties, and just one of the most beautiful travel destinations in the world that many Americans were fond of. Actually, the entire world was fond of the city. Today, it's a far cry. Armored vehicles have to secure money and patrolling the streets. Oh, pero que lo que es, ese tigre está armado. Hermano, ese tipo lo que trae es una maraca. Oh, pero ese, ese rifle mata un caballo. Pues ese va tan armado, wey. Matt, tell you what, that, that, that mop stick down there, tell you what. Bueno, es triste una ciudad tan bella que sea tan peligrosa. It's sad that just a beautiful city has to be so dangerous. This is a real loss not only to this, the, the country of Mexico, but to every traveler worldwide, every person on the face of the earth. It's sad that one of the most beautiful beach destinations in the world has to be patrolled like this. It's, it's disappointing, and I think this is a loss not just to Mexico. No es triste solamente para México, es triste para el mundo entero. Number 10. Morelia, Michoacán, very close to the big city, TF, Mexico City. Take a look at these photos. It's actually the same exact building. One was back in 2012 and one is more recently. You can see that an old building covered in graffiti back then, maybe 10, 15 years later, is now a thriving little business. And there has been a lot of improvement in Mexico over the last few years economically. When many of the people that left the United States because of Donald Trump voluntarily or by force, Obama also had a lot of deportations. A lot of the money that was in the United States went back to Mexico. And a lot of these communities that were pretty much impoverished today are thriving thanks to the people that went back to Mexico and started their lives there again. But despite the massive economical improvements that Mexico has seen over the last 10 or 15 years, but despite all these improvements, life for the people of Morelia is a different story. Poverty here is rampant, and these economical improvements have not been able to change the lives of every single person here. The murder rate is high, and many of the people in Morelia are living pretty much in shanty towns where poverty is almost not able to access the wealth that some people in the Mexico area have, especially around the bigger cities. When you get closer to the big cities, towards the center of the governments and power of Mexico, things change drastically. In a city like Mexico City, has as much opulence as Paris or Miami or any other large city. But when you get out to the outskirts and cities like Morelia that are further out, 
it's a little different story. The city has a really cool car culture and a lot of Mexican culture is based out of here. It's a beautiful city with a lot of culture, but the poverty here is also rampant. And while some people enjoy golf courses on the outskirts of the city, the vast majority of the people here are living in stark poverty. All right, guys, so those are the top 10 most dangerous cities in Mexico. This is the view from El Paso looking over into Ciudad Juarez. You can see the police lights right at the border. When I came to the United States in 1996, you could not travel directly from Cuba to United States. So we had to stop in Mexico. I spent three days in Mexico when I came to the United States. It's the only time I've really been in Mexico. Now I've driven for about 60% of the way along the US-Mexico border between the United States and Mexico, the different states from Arizona, New Mexico, Texas. There's still a few border towns that I haven't got to see, but I've seen a lot of the border towns on this side, and I'm really excited to get into Mexico, but a lot of my friends tell me it's very dangerous. And a lot of people that I talk to that cross Mexico are telling me stories of getting kid for about $2,000 not really a pretty situation. So once I get my passport, I don't know if I'm going to go to Mexico or not because I hear so many conflicting stories. But what I do know is that the people that I have met that have gone through Mexico on the way to the United States have pretty much told me horror stories. I heard a story recently about somebody going from like Nicaragua to the U.S.-Mexico border and then turning themselves into U.S. Customs. And they told me that going through Mexico was terrifying but they also told me that the most terrifying thing that happened to them was actually once they went into the deportation process, how they were treated in the United States by custom officials. And that is a very disturbing thing to hear. Imagine somebody who went through Guatemala, Mexico, crossed the border, got to the United States, was you know taken for ransom and all that. And yet the most scary experience wasn't going through all these countries. It was the way they were treated within the U.S. deportation process from having to sleep on cold mats, getting fed very little and repetitively the same thing to how they were abused by the U.S. custom officials, how they were tied up like dogs. Uh, just horrendous stories of the deportation process because not everybody who makes it to the United States will be allowed to stay. But the way they treat the people that are deported is, from what I've heard, horrific. I've had a lot of people tell me that they go to places like Monterrey Nuevo Leon and it's a beautiful, rich, wealthy city. But I also heard a story about somebody who was there and they were telling me people were pretty much walking around with the sticks on them like it was nothing. And if somebody wants to pick you up off the streets and take you with them and demand money, nothing can stop them. So all that makes me kind of very concerned with crossing into Mexico because I don't want to be put in a situation like that very different from traveling within the united states where you always have access to hotels and vehicles and we have had aggressions here in the united states from people trying to take our vehicle people trying to take our camera people chasing us in birmingham alabama had four people pull up in an suv point the sticks at us stuff like that happens in the united states too and not just in mexico the difference is at least in the united states nobody's actually going to take you and demand money because that's a huge crime here and it's a type of crime that gets investigated thoroughly, where in Mexico, it's just another asset of the economy there to do that to people. So, not sure if I want to do it or not. And if I do it, you guys probably won't know until after it's done. But I have considered going to Mexico once we get our passports, but I don't know if it's going to happen. I spent some time driving across the U.S.-Mexico border from Texas, all the states I mentioned. And a lot of times while you're near the border, you can hear what's going on in the other side. I've stayed in hotels where you can actually like overlook in the Mexico and you can actually see what's going on, on the other side and stuff like that. And it's a little bit tricky. Um, a lot of things that I've recorded or seen along the U.S.-Mexico border, I haven't uploaded it because it seems like really sketchy. Like a lot of ATVs running together and guys hooded up and stuff. So it seems like what's going on over there, it's a little bit way more dangerous than the United States. So... I don't know if it's really worth the hassle of hopping over there when I get my passport, but uh, we'll know if we do it or not. I hope I can travel to nice destinations for you guys and not scary places, but there it is. Qué triste que México sea un país tan bello, tenga tantos problemas. It's very sad that Mexico being a beautiful country has so much problems going on because it was a favorite travel destination of Americans. And take a look at the country of Cuba, where I'm from. I mean, Americans can't even go there, literally, like unless they have a special way of getting there. 
pasa lo mismo que en Cuba, un país bello, un país lindo, y la, la, los turistas no pueden ir muchas veces, especialmente los americanos. I mean, Canadians go all the time, but at the end of the day, it's just really sad that, uh, you know, despite the fact we try to enjoy the world, and the world has so many beautiful countries and places to offer, that going into these places can sometimes be extraordinarily dangerous. All right, un gran saludo a toda la gente que ve el canal. Los quiero mucho y vamos a ver si podemos entrar a México pronto cuando me llegue el pasaporte con mucho cuidado porque las historias que me han contado la gente de México han sido nightmares, pesadillas. Los quiero mucho. Gracias. Thank you guys for watching the video. And those are the top 10 most dangerous cities in Mexico to travel from what I can gather talking to my friends and doing some analytical research. And I do have a lot of friends that live in Mexico. I got a lot of friends that have been deported and they live in some of these most dangerous places. Like I got friends that can go over there and, and you know, be in pretty much in the action, just have somebody guide me. But like at the same time, I don't know what their economical situation is like now that they're in another, in another country and how far their, you know, their necessity is. And I just still don't feel safe going down there, even with people that I've met. And I'll be honest, even though on the Texas side, there's a lot of security, there's a lot of police presence, and the crime rates along the U.S.-Mexico border are really low on the U.S. side. Even with all that, it still feels super sketchy to be in these places along the U.S.-Mexico border, despite the fact it's relatively safe from a crime analytical standpoint. All right, guys, that's the video. Make sure you guys hit the like button and leave me some comments to help this video get some auger room going. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Yes, I am sick. You could probably hear it in my voice.